Spain. Yes, and this is our friend from Sacramento, Bruce. I think what's been really exciting for me on this particular project is that I have actually been working directly with the chief of the Manobo people who's out here Welcome, doing this in real life and I'm here now <laughs> for the first time seeing a project like this and not just part of a press junket or part of a parliamentary study trip where you see just what people want you to see. Now we're seeing it warts and all. Very often these projects are facilitated and enabled from the top down whereby a government puts a national framework in place and then attempts to filter these projects into the ground, into the forest communities etc. who are then resistant to adopt it and work with them. Where this is so unique is that it's actually come from the ground up. This is the gigas. The other day there was a ceremony and the Datus, these are the elders of the tribes, have made a symbolic gesture, sort of three symbolic gifts or whatever you want to call it, handed to Pedro, the chief of the Manobo people, and that means they're placing their trust in him and they've said to him, look, we don't know how to do it, We've seen you know how to do it. We want you to do the same for our people. Take us with you on your journey. We want to be one on this journey with you. That is unbelievable. And we witnessed that. We witnessed that. The way we see it starts out initially, it, it's about the people, the indigenous people that are here and helping them create a livelihood for themselves without putting pressure on the government. So that they're empowered through our monetary inputs to create self-sustaining infrastructure, uh, food crops, construction and their own cottage industries. And that's all around the setting of saving the forest. And where we're at right now is we actually have a joint venture agreement with them. Uh, it doesn't mean that we own the land, they still control the land, but we're their marketing arm now. And we've got, what, 9,000 plus representatives out there that are now selling Manobo, basically, in the benefits of saving the land and all the commercial infrastructure that springs from that. Well, what we've done is we're incentivising people and um, making people self-sufficient, you know, the old situation, you know, don't give them fish, teach them how to catch their own sustainability, that's what it's all about. Make people independent in many, many forms and ways, and that's what we've done. So the fact that we've cut to the chase and dealing with Pedro himself, we cut out all the middlemen, all the bureaucracies, and the fact that we can then, people are joining us. We don't, we just throw the pebble in, and then we have a sort of a level playing field and people are now joining the movement. So we've drawn scientists and concerned individuals and uh, politicians and uh, the church and churches, and uh, it's been wonderful. And so there's a social movement of people that care for the same thing and supporting initially as the Manobo project. But there are many other tribes here and there are many other forests here. And I know that once we're successful with the Manobo projects, then we'll, they will gravitate to us and see, look, that's a great way to do it. And I really like the idea of people, planet, progress and profit. You've got to have all that, otherwise you haven't got anything. You really haven't. We are a people with very rich in history. And this we witness today. Please stand and be recognized. Palakpakan po natin ating mga kapatid na indigenous peoples group of the Philippines. It's a very beautiful project. It gives hope to the tribe. They've been waiting for this for so long. I saw in their eyes and they were so encouraged, so excited that this project will push through and be sustainable in the long run. The grassroots are now uprising. They really wanted their concerns to be, to be heard. And I'm so glad more than ever that they really have the guts, the passion to really work and walk their talk. To express and show to the government that, hey, we need help here. But if you won't help us, then we have to do it. Backdoor approach. So it's from the grassroots up now. It's not more of a traditional bureaucratic approach. And even the government is hearing their side already. As compared before, it was quite a deaf ear. And I saw the struggle. But right now, it's really different. From the private sector, 
from the business group, from the National House of Representatives are coming in. It's not easy to bring congressmen here in this part of the country. But people from different tribes, not only in the Monobo tribe, are coming in from the north to the south. This is something spectacular. And this is really a historic event. Seldom do you see a tribal group coming from the mountain and attending this kind of congress. They're traveling by foot, they're traveling by motorcycles, and it's very risky. But they have the heart to really come and bring their children along with them, especially the elders. That's moving for me. This has to succeed and that the Manobo people also will give other indigenous people the hope and set an example and that they actually teach us something and that we don't always show up with the arrogance of, right, we have some money to spend, we have something to give you. You know, we need to understand also, we actually need you because you're giving us the air we need to breathe today, tomorrow. So I guess my hope is that this will be a step towards creating a more equitable society and it will keep our planet intact and it will become a joint and mutual effort. Let's all give a big hand to our children! My understanding of the conference was that it was time for the Manobo people to stand up and be counted and to also show the Philippines government that the world is interested and that didn't go unnoticed. And now the governments are interested in what they're doing and how they're doing it. And all the other tribes around now are asking the same question. How, how can we get involved in this and how can we benefit from it? Uh, but this is about the Philippines and ultimately the whole planet. We're in the place of duplication. Uh, network marketing is all about duplicating yourself and duplicating yourself so everyone can do it. Um, and that's what we've done, we've made it very, very simple that it can be duplicated worldwide very quickly. At the moment we guesstimate from the data available there are five and a half million hectares of rainforest left in the Philippines. A lot of degradations occurred, there used to be 25 million 20 years ago, imagine. So thank goodness it's been stopped at the right time. And we believe with the Manova project as an example, we can then cookie cut that and expand that and uh, we've been offered projects already. People are now coming to us saying, oh my goodness, you're actually doing something about it. So this is a very, very important project, uh, first of its kind. My hope is their dreams will be realized. That what we're talking about is what they will experience in the near future. For them, it's really a big deal between life and death because their generation is at stake. Coming up the stage and showing their support, it's not that easy. Tribes have different culture, but seeing them in different colors, that means they're united. You cannot just combine a tribe anytime you want. They have this ritual, they have this own protocol. But coming to the stage with all those acts, it's really moving, highly emotional. There are goosebumps <laughs> then, for sure.